Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Game Talk. Yes. I'm your host. D- shut up. <laughs> I'm your host, Dylan, and I'm joined with Hunter. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about, but shut up. Today we're going to be talking about <laughs> Bioshock. Uh, so, Bioshock. Yes. Good yes. game. A, a good game. Right, that's show. Don't get me started on this. <laughs> well, uh, we are. That's that's the point of no. you being first, here. First, we need to talk about oobs. Oobs? Oobs. Oh, okay. It's 20... 20- Apparently, <laughs> we're going to talk about Ultimate Battle... Uh, old, uh, epic Battle Simulator. Ultimate Battle Epic Battle Simulator. No, from now on, it will be called oobs. 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 Uh, what, what do you want to say about oobs? I don't know. Is it... Is oobs just like another version of the original Battle Simulator, or is this like the original version it's a different it's a different game okay because i saw i saw like everybody playing the original and you just saw like massive chicken people attacking like these little soldiers and then the little soldiers win and they're all like oh i did the little soldiers win against the chicken people and you're like i don't know anyways yeah it's like that but the graphics are better and it's supposed to be like a, a more realistic engine or something instead of funny but then you you also have funny stuff, so I don't really I don't really know what what it is. Well, it it will be oobs from now on for me. It's oobs, oobs, oobs. So Bioshock. Yes, yes, the one of <laughs> my favorite games of all time. What what shall what we discuss? What is your about favorite it? game of all time? It's so I'm going to put it as the entire series as a whole, including the downloadable contents. Because, yes, I can do that because it's all part of one story arc. I will say that that as a whole is my favorite game of all time. It would not be my favorite games of all time if it was not for the last two downloadable contents of Bioshock Infinite. Because we can all agree, first off, Bioshock Infinite was a mindfuck in the first place. But then once those two downloadable contents went in, and we all like saw how everything was connected, which we will get into. Absolutely blew everybody's mind and was like, oh, my God, how did they come up with this? How did Ken Levin, who amazing that he wrote this whole story and was able to do everything that he did, came up with this perfect idea for these games and tied them all together. So for the people who are... Uh who don't know anything about Bioshock. Let's start off by saying it's been out for 10 years now and you need to go play the first game and then all the other ones. Exactly. <laughs> and there, but, there actually is, and I even own it, there is a uh, remastered uh, editions that are out right now uh, for the new gen consoles. And I played them right next to each other. Like I set up my PlayStation 3, I played the original, and then I would go and I played the next gen one to see how they actually improved the graphics to see if it actually made a difference. And it did. Like the when they upgraded the graphics with the Unreal Engine, oh my god, it definitely makes a difference in the gameplay. So if if you are have never playing it and you are having to pick up either the old one and you have a next gen console, get the updated graphics one because it is absolutely phenomenal honestly even if they didn't upgrade the graphics i would have still bought a collection that are just like re-released oh yeah because this this one the one that i'm talking about comes with all three games and it comes with the downloadable contents which in my opinion to say that you have completed bioshock like all of what this is you need to play the downloadable contents for the end of Bioshock Infinite because it it really does tie everything together. So let's run the uninitiated through the, the basic plot as quickly as possible from Bioshock 1 to the DLCs. Like, like long story short? <laughs> Like long story short, for uh, we'll, we'll go uh, a game a piece. All right, so so we'll start with one, yes. and then we'll move to we'll skip two, and then we'll move to infinite. So Bioshock One, everybody uh, remembers, unless you haven't played it, you start off in an airplane, and he's reading a little note card, and it essentially 
all you see is him open that up and you see a little note and then the screen fades to black and you hear the plane crash into the ocean. You're like, oh no, something horrible happened and then it goes to the Bioshock logo and uh, your plane is as Jack, the uh, surv- the lone survivor of this this plane crash. And you see you're in the water and then you see the lighthouse. You're like, oh, this lighthouse is special. And it actually ends up that all of the lighthouses are special in all the games. You go in there and you see all this like Andrew Ryan propaganda. And then you find a bathysphere and you get in it for some reason that for some reason you're just a plane crash survivor and you're like, okay, I'm going to get in this random submersible that looks like 20 years old, but whatever. Um, And then you ride that down and you hear an advertisement from Andrew Ryan. that's all like, I hate the government. So I built a city and then you see rapture, the glorious city that it used to be and still is, even though it's being destroyed by splicers. And then you you show up in Rapture and this guy called Atlas, who later we find out to actually be Frank Fontaine. But he convinces you that he has a family there in Rapture and that he's trying to get them out of there. Um, And you meet all these like super rememberable characters along the way. You meet uh, Sander Cohen, you which is a art dealer that essentially his way of thinking for like what art was essentially you find out that a lot of his sculptures are actually just people who were trying to learn from him and they he killed them and turned them into these like i I don't know what to call them like ice sculptures like they're they look like ice but i don't think they are um there is a part where there is a lot of people in turned into ice sculptures but um you meet um like all these other people you run into and while you're on this quest and eventually Atlas convinces you that Andrew Ryan, who is still running the city, like he's trying to run his destroyed city. Atlas convinces you that, uh, Andrew Ryan killed his family. Cause you see a bathysphere explode and you, you think that his family's dead, but actually you find out there was no family later. And then you go up to Andrew Ryan and, I think this is probably one of the most iconic scenes in uh, all of video game history. At least I think it is, is this whole time, the whole time through the, when you're talking to Atlas and like you're making your way to go find Andrew Ryan, he says a phrase, would you kindly like constantly, like every time he's almost talking to you, he says like, would you kindly go do this? Would you kindly go do that? And then when you find Andrew Ryan, you get to his office he delivers this huge speech about like a slave and a man and like the difference between the two. And it finally clicks for all of you that you are Andrew Ryan's son and they designed you pretty much from Adam, the, the substance in the game that allows you to have your powers. They essentially made you and engineered your mind. The words of uh, Tannenbaum uh, which she was one of the scientists that helped uh, create little sisters and everything. But um, she, essentially, you find out that, that is a trigger world word where you are brainwashed that anytime somebody says, would you kindly do this? Would you kindly do that? You are forced to do whatever that is, which Jack being he's the one. And Andrew Ryan forces you to kill him your own father in front of you by using that excuse me that code word essentially and then from there you're like atlas pretty much tells you hey i'm frank fontaine and uh, i'm taking over the city now and i don't need you anymore so i'm going to try to kill you and then essentially shortening the game up so I'm not getting into a lot of the bulk of it. You find Frank Fontaine. He has like overdosed himself with Adam, like a crazy amount, which, and again, Adam is the stuff that allows you to have your powers and everything like that. It, it, what it's, what changes your DNA. It pretty much allows people to change DNA, like very specifically, and you can give you powers and everything. Um, you find Frank Fontaine and you, you kill him 
with the help of Little Sisters. Um, now, depending on how you played the game, because Little Sisters, you could either rescue them. Uh, background of what Little Sisters are. Little Sisters were pretty much um, little girls that were turned into like these walking uh, atom gathering machines, essentially. And they... Anytime somebody died that had Adam in them, they would go and they would collect the Adam out of them to protect, I, I guess, the investment that Frank Fontaine or Andrew Ryan had. Um, that part of the game, I'm not, I didn't really look into that much. I just know that they were made to gather the Adam so it could be reused, essentially. And you could either save them. And that's you removing the like hypnotic spell that's on them that like forces them to gather Adam or you could harvest them. And there's like this little slug inside of the, the girls that was where they actually kept all the Adam. And if you harvested them, you essentially killed the girls by ripping the slug out of them. If you saved them, then you just got rid of the spell and then the, the girls were free. So depending on that, that's how the first game ends. So if you saved all the little sisters, um, you got the good ending where all the little sisters that you saved essentially went back up to the surface with you, like not underwater, and they became your family because you didn't have a family because you, you learned that you were born in Rapture. You were created in Rapture. Um, you were Andrew Ryan's son, essentially, and they, as you grew up, they engineered you. Um, so they become your family and everything's happy. If you killed them all, then you find out that um, you take over rap Rapture and you essentially, at least per how the game says, you use Rapture's weapons to pretty much go after the world. And that's where that game ends. The way that I see Bioshock Two and Bioshock Infinite, I'm, go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. Yeah. Because that that plot synopsis went over pretty long. Thirteen minutes. What we're gonna have to do <laughs> is we're going to uh, we're gonna have to make this a multi part episode for the other ones. Okay, that sounds but, good. But uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna stop here. No, let's talk about the I first wanna, game. I still want to talk more about Bioshock. Yeah, yeah. So what, b excluding the Andrew Ryan scene, the iconic one. What was your favorite part about Bioshock? I. Gotta say, it was the side characters. Like, it, it had to be definitely the whole time. Like, Sander Cohen and um, Frank Fontaine and um, oh, who was the... Who was the, 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 the surgeon guy? I can't believe you forgot his name. I can't. I can't remember. But I, I remember that scene, like, uh, whenever you fight the surgeon guy, scaring the crap out of me. The first time I played it, because uh, uh, as far as horror games go, it actually it actually kind of fits the bill. Steinman in some in some cases, Doctor Steinman. Ah, yes. Because if you if you think about it, if you legitimately think about it, what if you look at Steinman as a character? He probably started out like really like a sane person coming down to Rapture. Like, oh, hey, I'm just going to practice my, you know, my plastic surgery down here and see what I can do, which is what I really believe a lot of plastic surgeons wish they could do. I, w I think they wish that they could push the boundary with some people. But as it's said in a audio diary that you find when you're in Steinman's clinic, he when he gets Adam and he essentially as he puts it, his the skin becomes clay. I think that's what drove him to madness was because when his tools, as he says, improves, his idea of the perfect person, he became obsessed with that. And that essentially turning a very sane person insane because all he could think about, all he wanted to do was make that perfect person and 
with Adam, he could really never do that because it just, he used too much of it. He never perfected it, like that kind of stuff. And you see that in the scene where you fight him because he's got all these dead bodies around him and he's like, that one's too ugly, that one's too fat. Like, all, all of this stuff, he could never attain perfection like he wanted. Yeah. He, uh... He and all the other characters... They really push the narrative of the game. And I think the narrative of the first Bioshock specifically was very... It's probably my favorite part of the game. The gameplay is okay. The graphics were good for the time. Uh, the game was still a little bit buggy whenever I played it. But uh, the the story... The story alone pushed it unlike some other games of the time well uh, let's see that was 10 years ago so what all, what all came out 10 years ago 10 years um, ago uh we're looking at the we were we were in junior high <laughs> <laughs> um well we had all the beginning ps3 games coming out so like um haze um, remember that old first person shooter <laughs> yeah so you had you had it like compared to games like that, which had they were fun. You went around and they 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 had their things, but it didn't have like the whole package of good gameplay and an amazing story that by Bio, the first Bioshock did. Exactly. Uh second Bioshock. I, I said we weren't going to talk about, it, but uh, second Bioshock. You go easy. I didn't like the second Bioshock. Yeah, it's that's okay, because see, and um, we'll talk about it in the next one. But I prefer the downloadable content of the second Bioshock, the storyline to that one, to the oh, that was really game. good. Yeah, exactly. But we'll we'll get into that in the next one. But back to the first one. Um, what I think is absolutely beautiful with the first one, and the. I, I think this is very hard to do, especially for how long it took for all the other games to come out and the storytelling to be perfect, is the way that they tied everything together, or Levin tied everything together for the first one. He stuck true to everything that they did in the first one, because if you look at a lot of stories and you look books, movies, anything, if they put out a game or any of those, and they're like, huh, I don't think this is going to end up with a sequel. They will finish things, and they will finish them a very certain way, and then later, when the... like, the the public or the publisher, what, whoever it is, says, hey, there needs to be a sequel to this, the writer is absolutely like dumbfounded they're like okay well i've already killed this person or i've already ended this so i don't know a perfect way to do this so sometimes you will see sequels that people absolutely hate and it's not their fault it's the fact that sometimes they never intended on there being a sequel which with bioshock i i feel like that kind of was the way that they thought to at the beginning of it but the way that they tied the second and infinite and all the downloadable content in, I think it blended perfectly a way, in a way that a lot of games and books can't do because they never anticipated a other games to come from it. Um, I don't really have a good example off the top of my head for this, but, you know, just stories that you see where they, they do certain things and then when they make a sequel for it, you're like, well, hey, that's a little different. Or, oh, hey, that's not really what happened in the first one. Or they're not talking about it the right way. Like that, those kind of stories. And you know what I'm talking about. That That's what I oh, mean. Oh, yeah. Sadly, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that. There's a lot of... I, I can't think of anything in particular either, but there's a lot of sequels that do that. And it's just... It, it, it breaks... It breaks the the story down just just a little bit. It's I want I want to say lazy writing, 
but usually it's not the writer's fault. So I don't want to like pin everything on it onto the writer, but it can sometimes just be lazy writing. I agree. And if, if you look at downloadable contents, the way that they, a lot of, at least the way that gaming works today is, you know, they, they'll do this and then they'll like, Oh, Hey, get this little bit more of the story for this much more money or get a prequel for this little bit amount of money. If you think about or it, go get, ahead. or get a brand new weapon skin for five bucks. Yeah. But it's like a lot of the times it's not, it looks like it's worth it. And then once you get it, it's like, I, this was either very poorly put together or, um, it doesn't go along with it. Well, with Bioshocks, it's downloadable content. It's either, blatantly telling you hey this has nothing to do with the story like um the protector trials in the first uh in the first uh game where you like play as a big daddy and you're like trying to save a little sister from a, a ferris wheel um yeah or they are blatantly telling you hey this happens during the story but it is has nothing to do with the story like it's in the same it's in Rapture. It's just in another part of Rapture, like Minerva's Den. But we'll get into that in the second s segment. Um, and another game that did that really well is Fallout, because every single downloadable content for, fa say, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, and even Fallout 4, even though I haven't played most of them, I'm sure they followed the same idea of hey, you can even complete the whole game and finish it, and you can still, like, Oh hey, I gotta I get this random radio transmission. I gotta go do this thing over here. And they don't impede on the original story like at all. And the reason that I like those is because you can go do that. You can go play that whole story that you have over there. And then when you come back, you are better because you you're stronger, your level's probably up, and you have weapons from these other areas and the downloadable content, you come back and it makes <coughs> sorry the original game better like uh big mountain or the uh you know like the sci-fi downloadable content for fallout new vegas when you came back from that you usually had like all these awesome weapons from that that you could use in the original game and i think that is good downloadable content in comparison to some other games where they don't really do that as good all right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Yep. Is there anything else you'd like to say about Bioshock real quick? Uh, not really. Bioshock, uh, we'll get more into it into the next episode. But uh, I... Oh, wait, no. I do I do have one more thing I want to ask you. Oh, no. Where is Rapture located? Oh, yes. So um, between the first and second game, and I was actually going to speak about this in the next one when we had time, but I'll go ahead and touch on it in this one. Oh, well, no, no. If we want to speak on to the next episode, then we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll leave that as a teaser. If you want to know where Rapture is, you got to watch the next episode. Yes. And I will, um, have it pinpointed on a Google maps exactly where it is. And I'll have, uh, Dylan throw that up there in the next episode. And we'll talk about the amazing connection that, um, the game company did between Bioshock one and Bioshock two to completely seal the deal. So everyone was super excited for Bioshock two, even though it was pretty okay. <laughs> It was it was an exceptionally okay game. Yes. That's my review of Bioshock 2. But we'll get more into that into when we come back. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Goodness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>